Okay, we don't have to be quite so quiet. I'm just fixing up the slides here and we'll start in a minute. It's okay not to do notes. Oh, you don't, you don't want notes? Okay. However, I'm now struggling to make this show up. Has anyone experienced this yet? I'm not exactly an expert, but I would like to have a first night. Somebody is, I'm asking because somebody is already in the notes. So I'm wondering if somebody's already doing that. Is there anything that you did on the video side over here? Oh, no, it's okay. Yeah, yeah so it's not the cable. Okay. Mike, would you be willing to let us use your mm -hmm. laptop? Yeah, that's okay. I'll just put out some stuff. Um, it's not the problem. Yeah. 
So the preview, we will do a slideshow, do an auto slideshow. I guess we better move that sustainably. It's not a slideshow tool. I don't know if I have an acrobat in there. Okay, everyone, I think we're finally ready to go. Sorry that it took a few minutes. So, in this session, uh, this is the final session of the community growth space. So, we have covered a lot of topics over the last two days. We have talked about campaigns, we have talked about chapters, we have talked about technology for growth, we have talked about what communities do on wikis for growth. And so these lightning talks are uh, the final set of ideas that are really diverse and interesting ideas from different communities about um, smaller takes on how they approach growth and retain new users. So we are gonna be hearing six short lightning talk presentations. They're about six minutes each, and we'll keep time on them. And then when they're all finished, uh, I hope the presenters can stick around in case people have questions or there can be discussion about it. So we're going to hear from um, Ivana and Miroslav uh, about small grants for great results. I'm just reading them all out, but you are first. <laughs> uh, we're going to hear from Mike about his experience as a New Zealand Wikipedian at large. We're going to hear from Lydia about how Wikidata can provide something small for any user to do. We're going to hear from Scott um, about how older wikis and larger wikis can help newer and younger wikis grow. We're going to hear from Juan Dev about a theory on growth from the Czech community. And we're going to hear from Reem about uh, using Wiktionary as a teaching tool. So first, uh, Ivana and Miroslav. So I'm going to open up your slides. Thank you. So I'm advancing for you, that's okay? Okay. And let me just say one more thing. Timers, timer papers. Thanks. So um, when we're doing this, I can probably start. Uh, uh, today, um, my colleague made a and I prepared this, but I'm gonna talk since we have only uh, five minutes. Uh, so we're going to talk about a small grant a uh, small uh, grant for great results. So, um, let's go back. Uh, so what is this all about? Uh, small, the Wikimedia Serbia is giving small uh, grants for people who want to be involved in our community. So this is our way to involve new people by giving them the chance to be a part of the Wiki project uh, and to uh, uh, start a, a new project uh, by their own. Um, we can go next. So this is something we all need, uh, and it, strengthening our communities. So we all need new, new people. We all need, uh, of course, uh, uh, to to like uh, give the chance to the older ones, but also to uh, the newcomers. Um, uh, my parents are the perfect way to do that, since they have really a uh, small risk because we have a small amount of money. We only giving five uh, five hundred euros. Uh, but also we can give, uh, you know, smaller amounts of money. Um, advantages, uh, you don't need the great amount of money, so uh, in the Wikimedia Serbia it's 500, but also you can give uh, 100 or 200 or whatever. Uh, you don't face high, high level of risk, which means that uh, even if that project fails, it, it's not a big deal. I mean, that person just won't be active anymore and that's okay. Uh, but we don't, we won't have any problems uh, because of it. Uh, you can even realize small, small micro grants uh, without money, <laughs> small projects, sorry. So you can give them books from your library, or you can give them some tickets, which are not expensive, uh, etc. So uh, after these projects, our goal is uh, for people to continue on work, uh, working on a wiki project, um, and even after that, their project ends. So the best thing about it is really, really uh, can be implemented in various communities. 
Um, so you can encourage your community uh, by giving them small grants and they will see their opportunity uh, and actually thank you uh, uh, through giving you the great results. Uh, so the process should be as simple as it uh, can be. So don't complicate. Uh, don't be uh, uh, so you know having some uh, selection process, uh, complicated selection process. Uh, don't have uh, just uh, uh, create them a simple opportunity to be a part of your wiki community. You can go. Uh, how should be? Uh, how does that process? Um, look like. So this is the timeline. You can divide your process in uh, several phases. For example, uh, I uh, actually, uh, we, we can take here four phases. First one is to open a call for a submission. So everyone can have a short um, a formula where they can see the, the questions um, and they can answer. And of course, we always say to them, if you don't know how to fill that out, you can always contact us and you can always uh, say, okay, I don't know how to do it, and we will uh, provide you with uh, some help. Uh, the second phase is to spread the word with the uh, within your community. Of course, it can be someone who is uh, uh, already active, but also we are focusing on new uh, people. Uh, so spread the word, you go to the village pub, um, uh, share that information on your social network, on your communication channels, on your mailing list, whatever uh, sources you have. Uh, in the third phase, we have selection process. So we're trying to accept as much as project as we can. So sometimes those projects are uh, don't have the budget of uh, 500 euros, but also have, uh, for example, hundreds. So we have uh, rather than five projects, we accept seven or eight projects with a smaller budget. And the fourth phase is that project uh, uh, can start. So you just help them uh, with their beginning, you provide them training, you provide them uh, some uh, suggestions, you provide them some help, uh, uh, and after that you continue following their work and uh, they will, uh, they can, you know, continue doing even after that ends. We can go uh, next. So our local context is Wikimedia started, uh, Wikimedia started with MicroGrants in 2014. We have uh, 27 projects until now, but uh, nine projects are still in progress. Okay. Um, this is the picture um, how you can really see how it goes uh, by us. So from 2014, we can see the uh, increase of number uh, of uh, uh, written and approved articles. Uh, so this uh, number is bigger and bigger, and we are trying. We are hoping that uh, it will be the trend in the future. And uh, I won't go through the table. It's just that, that you can see the numbers. So uh, they're, uh, in our opinion, impressive because we are talking about the beginners. So in these uh, five years, we have more than uh, twenty thousand uh, images, and we had more than a thousand articles written and approved. Uh, so uh, this is our like uh, the suggestion and our um, message for you that you should start with this. You can try, even if you don't succeed in the beginning. Maybe you will succeed in the uh, future. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. That was great. And on time. Okay, so um, I forgot who I read that would be next. Check. Okay, so next is Mike Dickinson, New Zealand Wikipedia at large. It's great to be here. I'll use this. Um, so I'm a museum curator and a biologist and got into Wikipedia editing as part of my job as a curator. Ended up doing it so much that I realized it was a more important outreach tool than the actual day-to-day -day curatorial work. Hence, I applied for uh, one year funding from the foundation 
under a project grant to be what I decided would be called a, a Wikipedia at large, which is a new word that I made up, uh, which they quite like apparently because they, they keep saying it's a cute term. Um, so what this involved was spending a year traveling the length of New Zealand um, in the Wikimobile, which uh, was an entire self-contained home and office because at this point I did not have a home, I just had a storage unit in Whanganui. So I managed to get them back from the very tippy top of the North Island all the way down to Bluff here and on side trips and spent substantial time in four, the four main centres there. So thousands of kilometres travelled and I worked with a range of institutions from the land sector, library, National Library, the, uh, museums in Otago and Nelson, to scientific research organisations, to archives, to uh, a wildlife sanctuary. Um, ran lots of events, edit-a-thons, talks and meetups, and stayed in 50 to 55 different beds for a year. So that was quite fun. Uh, but it finished a few weeks ago and I'm still decompressing and in recovery. I just wanted to talk about three of the projects I thought were most interesting and significant that came out of that year's work. Um, so the first was uh, a response to uh, an environmental problem called Cody dieback. Cody dieback is a disease affecting native trees in the north of New Zealand. It's incurable and certainly fatal. We don't know how to stop it. Um, I wrote a piece in the media uh, local website about how there was no there was no Wikipedia article about Cody dieback, but despite millions being spent on um, outreach and communications by the government for ten years, uh, so I created an article. Um, on that as part of this little bit, little bit of media stirring. And, but it wasn't very good. So I decided we would host um, a wiki blitz. And that means going to a panel of scientists who've been giving a talk about Cody Dieback and inviting them to come to the pub on a Tuesday night and sit down with Wikipedians. Uh, and none of the scientists had ever edited Wikipedia before and weren't keen to learn how but they had huge subject knowledge and they could sit down, divide up the article with Wikipedians, each taking one section. They could donate um, photographs that they themselves had taken and of course point people at all the up-to-date publications and references. So in the course of one evening, for the price of a round of beers, we doubled the length of the article and added another 25 references and a whole bunch of photographs. So this is a model I call the Wiki Blitz as opposed to an edit thon uh, and it seems to be a pretty good way to get subject specialists involved with Wikipedia. The scientists were very, very impressed at how fast they could um, update and put accurate information up there compared to the official website, which they said took months to get changes and corrections made on. Secondly, I worked with uh, a research organisation called Landcare Research, Malaki Fenua, a government organisation. They, for 30 years, had had a biological illustrator called Des Helmore, who illustrated mostly insects for them for scientific publications. Uh, Des had retired 10 years before, uh, but because he was an employee all this time, the copyrights of these images rested with Landcare. They were sitting on a hard drive and Landcare didn't really know what to do with them. So I said, could we maybe upload them all to Commons under a CCBY license? And they were very amenable to that and have now adopted an open license as their standard license. So we uploaded about a thousand of these illustrations. Uh, and they're, they're beautiful and they're being used now to see in multiple different contexts. But the nice, the thing that I liked about this project is that it also got there's a Wikipedia article out of it. Because um, he was living just in retirement, very quietly, and had no real attention paid to him in his work for many years. But as a consequence of the Wikipedia article, he got written up in a major magazine, and suddenly he's getting recognition for all that work he did. And the nice thing is he even put a live link into Wikimedia Commons as well, which I think is probably a first for a New Zealand magazine. So that was a, that was a real success. Um, and then finally, and tragically, we had the Christchurch Mosque shootings um, massacre in uh, March this year, and you can see the article was created almost instantly and had uh, about half a million views on the first day. Um, but at the time there were almost no images related to the event. And so I put out a call for um, photographs related to the mosque shootings and publicised this widely through the media, 
trying to get people to donate images of floral tributes and vigils and protests and posters and so forth to you know, add to the commons so that the memory of the tragedy wasn't just based on the few murders that that reprehensible person did. Um, one of the most important images that came out of this event was this photograph of our Prime Minister, Jacinda Ardern, um, just taken through the window with reflections at our mosque, uh, sorry, at our community hall, which had gone to hijab to meet with the Muslim community. And this image became so, so famous that it got written up several times in the international media as a sort of uh, portrait of the event. And luckily we were able to get the city council to agree to donate it to Commons. Uh, in which we all, it's been featured picture in our two different Wikipedias and we've got multiple language captions and about uh, nearly 200,000 views a month even now. So that was a really important piece of work and it all took just a few emails to get them to agree to do that. So this is the side effect of this event here is like a profile in the New York Times which I don't recommend because then you end up with a Wikipedia article about yourself and one of the piece, the only piece of personal information in it is apparently my favourite dinosaur is Starogosaurus. It's like, so never make a foolish mention to a journalist if you're being interviewed is the main lesson from this. Thank you very much. That's great. Thanks, Mike. Okay, so next up is Lydia to talk about small contribution ideas of Wikipedia. So I'm just going to open this up for you. Now with Wikidata we are able to, and I want to show you some of the ideas that people have already tried to, to make reality and are using every day so that you can take them to your communities and try them out. Alright, um, all of these are uh, linked in, in the heading, uh, the slides will be published after this and then you can also uh, follow the links. Um, the first one is mix and match. Mix and match allows you to connect a catalog to Wikidata. So if you, for example, have a local museums um, or art galleries a catalog and you want to connect their painters to Wikidata, then you can use this tool to easily make that match and add new statements to Wikidata. Um, next one, please. Uh, then we have the Wikidata game, which is a very easy way for low-key way to edit the data and um, add information to it. For example, there's one game that shows you a topic, um, a Wikidata item, and asks you if uh, a number of pictures are a good representation or not of this topic. Um, and this way, making more images available to our other Wikimedia projects, if we already have them. Then we have something like uh, integrality, which is relatively new and allows you to have these dashboardy kind of things for um, for topic areas in Wikidata. Um, this one was for video games, and people were trying to complete data about video games in Wikidata. So, do they have a publisher? Do they have a year when it was released? Uh, do they have a publication date? all these things. And with this dashboard, you can kind of see how you're making progress, which is always nice when you for an editathon, for example. All right, then we have the Terminator. <laughs> and no, this is not Arnold Schwarzenegger. Um, but this is a tool that will help your, your community to make Wikidata more usable for them. Um, one of the really integral parts of Wikidata is that it's multilingual. So no matter what language you're looking at um, 
in your looking Wikipedia app, um, you should be able to see the information because someone has translated it. Now someone needs to translate this sometimes. <laughs> And Terminator is a nice way to find the most important items that don't have an, a label or a description in your language so that you can help other people understand what, what the information in the data is. All right, then we have um, a bunch of Spocker queries you can write to visualize information, like this one. Um, there, this is querying or um, query interface for things in Wikidata that do not have a label in, uh, that do have a label in Swedish but not in English. That is not something you would want as a Swedish person, for example, because you want the rest of the world to also understand what they're talking about. Um, and this way you can easily find that and get people together to make your content more accessible in uh, regardless of your language and you can change the language for example, in the query when you uh, click them into that. Then we have WikiShootMe. WikiShootMe is a tool that uh, shows you the area around you and um, looks for things that do not yet have an image on Wikimedia Commons or where an image on Wikipedia or Wikimedia Commons might exist, but it's not yet connected to Wikipedia and therefore uh, harder to find for all the other wikis. Um, and the, the dots here tell you this already has a picture, this does not yet have a picture. Maybe you can go on a photo tour, photo walk and um, take pictures of that and make it available to the rest of the world. Next one. Um, then another thing you can query for uh, is things like this. Um, on Wikipedia, we know a lot of people, and we know some of their Twitter accounts, Facebook profiles, and so on. And in this query, you can see uh, biologists and their Twitter profiling, and some of them have an image, but some of them do not. And now, um, in a very nice way, you could approach them on Twitter and say, hey, um, would you be willing to uh, make a picture available to Wikimedia Commons for you so that we can illustrate your Wikipedia article, for example. And of course, this is not restricted to biologists. Whatever strikes your fancy, you can change the query and um, adapt this to your needs or your topic. All right, uh, then we have something called constraints violations. Um, Wikidata is trying to be smart about finding errors in the data. Um, so for example, if someone died before they were born, that's probably not correct. <laughs> Except if they're a time traveler, but <laughs> yeah. Um, and what happens is you get a little flag like this uh, next to the statements, where it's trying to tell you that something is wrong here. Um, and you can click on it, and it will give you a bit more information about what exactly is wrong, and you can help fix it. And if you look at a few items in Wikidata that um, that you care about and that you know a lot about, you can help fix those constraints violations and uh, provide more accurate information. All right, um, speed patrolling. Speed patrolling is a tool that is specifically made for Wikidata to make it easier to fight vandalism, right? It, it shows you uncontrolled changes from recent changes on Wikidata and you can say, um, skip this, uh, patrol this, or roll this back, this is yes. And then we have duplicity, second to last one. Um, sometimes Wikipedias write articles independent of each other and they don't know that they are writing about the same topic. Um, duplicity is a tool to find these. So if English Wikipedia writes about this building, for example, and Swedish Wikipedia also, but they never connect them, this is how you find them. Um, and making, again, more information available to people by uh, connecting the different language versions. And last one. Um, last year we introduced a new area of Wikidata uh, next to the item space which describes things in the world like Stockholm or this building um, and a new thing we introduced is lexicographical data. That is data like you would find it in a dictionary for example, describing words and language. And this is still in its infancy and a lot of words in a lot of languages are not yet described. 
And uh, Wikidata Lexi Inform and Wikidata uh, Lexi Census are two tools that help you easily document your language in Wikidata. So again, that more people can benefit from it and that we can build, for example, smarter digital assistants in your language. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lydia. Scott, you're up next. Young wikis, which are, uh, don't have a lot of content yet, and their, struggle, their biggest struggle is to get more content on their wiki by, by one meaning or another. Um, a middle-aged wiki has some content, but they're, it, they, they're, they struggle to keep it updated. Right? Um, they don't have a, a, as large a community yet, um, and their content, they've translated once, but now new information has come, and their articles quickly get updated. And an old wiki has lots of valuable content, and they're like a dragon sitting on their board. Right? Their, their biggest worry is how to keep their content uh, 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 accurate and protected from bandits and whatnot. Um, and then there's some uh, graphs that we've seen in, in research um, you know, that sort of quantify that as sort of early growth and decline phase of wikis and whatnot. Um, so next slide. Um, so the key insight that I, I sort of, you know, the, the one main point here is that I, I think a lot of tools we're building are just for a very single specific age of a wiki and they're targeting this one narrow thing. So content translation is targeted at that young wiki who just needs more content on their wiki, right? Um, things like recent changes control uh, tend to be targeted toward the middle age or elderly wikis where they're, they're worried about vandalism um, or they're trying to check that, that, um, that things that are changing in the wiki actually reflect the real world. Um, that is mostly elderly. And things like Kiwix, um, right now, um, distributing offline um, uh, uh, content to Wikipedia are built with the elderly Wiki mindset that uh, changes don't ever happen. I'm just going to send out this, this static copy of the Wiki out to the world um, and worry about updates later. And that works for sort of English Wikipedia, but most of the places it's being used um, are younger or middle aged Wikis where you actually want to get lots of updates. And ideally, for a middle aged Wiki, you want to get uh, updates because things change, right? Um, and for a young wiki, you want to get content back because your biggest thing is not actually distributing out to the, the people that you're interested in, but getting their, their content back in the wiki. Uh, and so I'd like to see us build cross wiki tools to help each other, right? To keep the idea of different ages <laughs> in mind and to symmetrically help, uh, help wikis in different age groups uh, work together. Um, next slide. So, so let's think about translation tools. So I sort of cheated. I said uh, uh, content translation is currently aimed at one, one age, but it's actually aimed at a specific pair. It's aimed at an elderly wiki with lots of accurate content and a younger wiki who needs content, right? But if you imagine more broadly, translation tools should be uh, more, more uh, uh, appeal to a broader range of ages, right? But you, once you translate that article once, then you're sort of in the middle age category. You want to be able to use translation tools to keep to propagate changes from one wiki to another to keep them up to date. Because um, a large wiki has lots of articles, but also doesn't have a lot of diversity. And so um, you'd also like to use translation tools to surface unique content from smaller wikis and get them back to the big wikis, right? So the smaller wikis can help the big wikis, and the big wikis can help the small wikis, um, and everyone can sort of help manage changes together. Um, next slide. So, um, and this is especially dealing with this is a sort of standard um, uh, illustration of content gaps. That, you know, English Wiki has all this stuff, but you know there's this bright spot in, uh, in Swahili Wikipedia that we'd like to get into all the other wikis. Um, but if you look at it, it's actually a little bit more interesting. That there is actually Swahili content here. If you go to the next one, if you if you look at this against world population density, what you see is um, you know actually this is mostly there's articles about where there's people. That makes sense. But look at this big dark spot in Upper China there. Um, 
And that's the part which doesn't is nearly as dense up, up in the English Wikipedia. So you know that's another type of content gap that we'd like to sort of be taking content from from this wiki and bring it back to this wiki and then set in and, and tell the other wikis as well. Uh, next slide. So um, and then these tools, uh, you know, I've been talking about cross wiki, but there are also tools we'd like to maintain within a wiki because there, uh, a given wiki can have content which is in different categories too, right? So I just sort of said that like articles about China are probably in that young category. It seems like there's a big gap. Um, in, you know, just just staying with, on English Wikipedia, right? Articles about China seem to be missing. But uh, sports articles on English Wikipedia, like every time there's an Olympics, there's suddenly this middle-aged category where there's lots of edits that we want to keep up to date with. And then you know we've got things like medical topics where we actually want to manage the change and make sure that the information is as accurate as possible and sort of slow things down. So if we build wikis that are age aware, we'll say, or, or tools that are age aware, hopefully they can help us working across wikis and also help us working within within wikis. Um, next slide. So that's so that's basically so this lightning talk is more about a challenge, a way of thinking than a solution. I don't other than sort of generally improving translation tools. Um, but I'd like to send that out as, as, a, uh, as a question to you guys with what sorts of tools you want to build to manage this age difference. That's it. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Scott. Those are really cool maps. Uh, so next is Wandev. <coughs> So thank you very much. Uh, I continue with slightly more theoretical model, which can help you to see how to motivate people in the Czech community, even in the communities around the world. So I am basing it on the theoretical model of the personal per people, how they're motivated of that person up there. He describes four basic groups of people, the influencers who are happy when they can influence people, the discoverers who are happy when they can understand themselves and their environment, the helpers who are happy when you are happy, and the hard workers who are happy when the work is done perfectly with precision. So for example, this would be the model for Czech society, where there's a predominance of influencers and hard workers, and others are kind of in a smaller number, and they're even pushed to behave the way these behave. Well, for example, I would guess for Wikipedia this model, where there are mostly hard workers and they're all missing, let's say, the helpers group. So how to deal with uh, the influences and hard workers we have in uh, our society? Most of the influences are active, so you can see it's divided like recruitment, where to recruit and how to recruit, and retention is again how to uh, let the people continue in our community. And the active people, it's usually about the motivation, what to do, that they work hard, let's say. And the low one is more like not to demotivate that much. So influencers you would find in the different groups, clubs, they are trying to lead them, they are running their own projects. So talking with them would be talking how Wikipedia is influential about the organizational structure. And many of them would like to get into the position of admins, bureaucrats, and so on, but uh, the idea is not to give it them for free, but tell them, let's create 100 articles, you got the admin position, bureaucrat articles, 300, 300 articles, also helping other people. And it's actually what already works in Wikipedia, that we don't give adminship to somebody with no edits. For hard workers, those might be the people who are, let's say, in some groups and who are collecting on all information about their interest. They mostly flow to the Wikipedia automatically, but you can also work with them, that it would be much longer explaining them and showing them that Wikipedia is really about the good work. And again, they would not need any external output, they will create hundred good articles by themselves, but here it's important not to demotivate them by let a lot of people tell them how they're creating the articles who is nobody reading. So there's usually a good cooperation between the, these two groups and other people who will tell them that they're an integral part of the community, 
giving them a thanks, giving them a patch. So this is the example. We have the organizations in the Czech Republic who are working and supporting Wikipedia. To the left side, that's a chapter. Wikimedia Czech Republic, to the right side, the organization called Artlib. And here, here you feel slightly the difference in the way of their presentations. The left one is more for emotions, which is typical for the influencers, while the right one is more on detailed data and they show just the good thing they have done, which is more typical for the discoverers. But the trouble here is that the influencers and discoverers have the uh, hardest way to be cooperators between each other, so there's a high individualism in the Czech Republic, in the Wikipedia sometimes, and sometimes the competition. But still they work on the same project and both can create uh, pretty good things. And slightly let's have a look on another two groups, especially the helpers, because we're talking here in the movement about getting more women into the movement, that we need people who help newbies. And I would say that most of the helpers would be women, not all. You can have uh, women in the influencers group elsewhere, but most people would be in such group. And the trouble is, I guess, that their activity on Wikipedia projects is something which is still not recognized by the community, because Hardworks wants to have uh, lots of articles and really work done, while the discoverers would be jumping from activity to activity, and the helpers would probably create only 30 articles and then they will dedicate to helping you with patrolling and so on, not creating quality articles and so on. So the question is whether we are able to recognize their work on the projects as a good work and then I think they will flow much uh, faster to our movement. So the last slide is about this symbol of harmony, to think about it. There are two questions which I have for you. One is how many parts it has and in what compositions these parts are. Thank you. Hey, thank you, on that. So our last lightning talker is Reem. And let me open up yours. Dictionary Guide. about how to write definitions, 
how how dictionaries work and what are the elements they need to have for each member in the dictionary, the types of dictionaries and all that. So they just needed a place to uh, actually apply their knowledge and uh, I thought that dictionary should be the place. So again, the group of 70 students, I gave each one of them uh, 10 words, 10 uh, uh, like head words, and I asked them to, uh, of course we follow like different procedures. We have uh, learned together throughout the semester, and each one of them uh, should add like the translation and like the whole dictionary entry to uh, the Arabic question. Uh, this I thought, uh, and I, I actually will tell you a couple of success stories as well, very quickly. Uh, this project has been very helpful in my opinion and also the students' opinion because uh, it was as, um, um, one of the very few projects they have ever done in the university that are actually related to something that they might use in the future. It's not like something that they will do and I will just take it from them, grade it, and just forget about it. It's actually there. And actually two of my students already got like two different positions uh, in lexicography and terminology uh, because they, uh, they have like this as showcase for their work and also because they actually use what they have there. So it actually stuck in their minds. It's not like they thought that it, it evaporated of the course. Um, so um, this is this is what I created for the students. This is a step-by-step -step guide uh, for them uh, about how to add uh, the lemmas or the dictionary entries to dictionary, the Arabic dictionary. Uh, I made it in English because my students um, are more comfortable with reading instructions in that way. But um, I also thought that um, this, if uh, this one is there, if it's like available for other people, especially like on comments, uh, you can just basically get the gist of how things go. You can replace the Arabic examples in whatever language you have, but you still have like a nice structure. You don't have to create everything from scratch, like I did. I had to. Um, yeah, um, so um, I was really happy to do that because again, it helped the student and, uh, and also because it was part of my job. It was not like extra, extra load. It was of course some extra load, but not like hugely extra load. So that was nice because it went in line with my job. Uh, also, uh, I wanted to um, tell you about a couple of challenges we had. Uh, basically, uh, the first challenge I had with my students is the name of which in itself. It was kind of hard to tell students that Wichini is the same as Wikamus. And Wikamus is the name of Wichini in Arabic. It is not a nice word to say, like it, not like it is offensive, but it doesn't really sound like anything we have ever seen in Arabic. So that was the problem. The other problem is that I had to um, create the list of words completely on my own. Wikidata does not help at all with Wichini, and that took a lot of time. Uh, another problem was that there was no uh, way or no tool for me to help uh, to, to find and supervise the work of the students. So I had to do this all on my own uh, without any help and also using extra uh, tools that are not hosted on Wiki at all, like Google Docs, Google Sheets, Facebook. There's no way I can like, detect or follow the work of the students. Uh, yeah. And also, there were no head material at all, so I had to create that from scratch. Uh, but uh, the good thing about all of that is that we came out of, with this, which is really nice, and that actually was a step ahead for students. And also, uh, there is a Wikipedia mailing list, and that was a huge help for me when I started, because I sat there and apparently there are a couple of people who did something with Wikipedia in their classes, but we just I just never heard of them, and we kind of had a talk. Um, so, yeah, I think that was a great way for growth uh, of the education program in my country. Uh, it also, um, from this program, many students started to write for Wikipedia because they were like, hey, those are rated, I can do that as well. Um, so, um, yeah, I totally invite you to, if, if you have the chance with your students, to do something like that. It's very easy to do, and um, yeah, it's really helpful. And if you have any questions, let me know. Thank you. Okay, that is our last talk. Thanks, Reem, and thanks to all our, our talkers. So, um, there's a lot more time in this block, right? It's not time for a poster session yet. You're welcome to head out if you want, but all of our presenters are still here. If people have questions or comments, so 
Um, I, I can start this off. Um, so I have a question for uh, Mike. Um, so Mike, you told us a lot of interesting stories about um, results that came from your work as a uh, New Zealand Wikipedia. Um, I'm also wondering about whether you were able to like leave a trail of enthusiasm for Wikipedia, right? So there was content that was created. Were there Wikipedians that were created? Yes, we had. Um yeah, we had hundreds come along to various different editing events we set up, but of course the issue is retention, isn't it? And my goal with the grant was to set up a self-sustaining meetup uh, in each of the main four main centres, so that so that it wasn't my you know, me having to organise things. And we actually we've got now self-sustaining meetup groups in three of the four happening where Wikipedians are meeting every few weeks. Uh, but just over coffee, and the, to me, these sorts of social events are the things that actually help support and retain new users. So I'm really pleased with that. Very interesting. Thank you. And I also have a question for Lydia. So Lydia, you showed us so many interesting tools. Are there any that you particularly recommend people can use with new Wikipedians who are making some of their first either Wikipedia edits or first Wikipedia edits? I think um, writing in a query or finding someone to write your query that shows missing information and then uh, gathering a few people to collect that, like the query I showed about um, biologists with a Twitter account but no picture, um, where, you, where the task is relatively easy, contact that person on Twitter and ask them if they want to provide a picture. Um, I think that is a, is a good way. Um, if you're struggling to write a Spocker query, that's no shame, <laughs> it's hard. Um, there's a page on Wikidata where you can request a query. It's called Wikidata column request a query. Where there's lots of people who would love to write you your query. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. It's like Wikidata can be a place to find tasks to do. Um, yeah, raise your hand if you have a question, but I have more. Uh, Ivana, um, so you told us that there were a lot of small grants and they were successful. What's one of the most successful ones? A particular story. Uh, well, <laughs> I never thought about uh, what the most successful one, maybe it can help. But uh, for me, it's maybe more important that a lot of those grants uh, projects actually, they uh, turn out to be uh, a bigger project. So for example, in uh, 2018, someone applied with a microgrant project, and after that, that project uh, um, like um, evolved into a bigger and annual project. And uh, that's maybe the most important thing. Um, uh, what was, uh, so one of the Wikipedian, he's uh, retired and he has a lot of time and also he's uh, so motivated to write articles and uh, uh, upload photos. So for example, uh, one year we had, uh, I think, five or six uh, thousand photos from, uh, from him and about uh, three uh, hundred uh, articles. And it was like, the, 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 uh, he took uh, one part of the Serbia, uh, like, for example, Shumadia, uh, and he go there and, you know, take photos from uh, cultural monuments, from natural, uh, natural heritage, from, uh, natural goods, uh, etc., and write articles and uh, take photos and illustrate articles. And it's really a, a good example because he's a, he's a man who uh, continued working uh, on annual projects, uh, so this may be a good example. Uh, but also, I don't know, we had a photo school in uh, one research center when the, the participant, no, we did an annual project, sorry, sorry, mistake. Do you wanna add something? Yeah, so we also had uh, something called the Wiki Loves Dragonflies, uh, and it, they are actually enthusiasts who go on the field and find all the types of dragonflies that fly around Serbia. And they uh, used Wikipedia as their first source, I mean, not source, but like first part of their work, and then made a book uh, based on the material that they did create on Wikipedia previously. 
And also one more is uh, a person tried uh, wanted to uh, take photos of all the uh, roadside monuments that were left for, since like World War I, which was a, uh, let's say, a cultural style to honor the dead who, who died in the Balkan Wars and World War I, and their graves were never known. So their families rose like a little monuments that look like human beings, right? And uh, since they are crumbling now, they are 100 years old, so she, she decided to uh, make a project to go around Serbia and to uh, take photos of all of them. And it is currently third year already? Yeah, yeah third year of her project. It started as a, a little micro grant and now it's like an annual project already second. So uh, this is a, an idea that grew. Uh, we just, you know, like when people are not sure that they would uh, withstand the whole year as a project, they try this little type that can last uh, as, as long as they need it, you know, they need funds. Then later, next year, they feel more uh, aware of how much they would need, how much it can last, and they enlarge their budget and their, their goals. That's some of the examples. Uh, so I have a question, and it's a question for you. Uh, how you were engaging uh, uh, people out of the Wikimedia movement, your grants, where it was like that, I don't know, you published publicly that you will have this program, but you support them, and they were writing to you, or what was the way? Uh, okay, uh, so uh, we used different communication channels. So first of all, our internal communication channels, mailing list, uh, village pub, uh, Facebook groups, um, uh, website, blog, etc. Uh, but also, uh, we have a good collaboration with internet portals for, um, and a lot of new people are, are searching information about them. Uh, so we use like uh, those portals for uh, announcing our public call for projects, um, as well as you know, uh, we had a proactive approach so if we know that some of the organizations are uh, maybe interested or maybe we talked with them earlier then we just send them okay remember you told us that you have a, an idea so we suggest you can do it um, or for example if we have uh, some individuals at conferences uh, so we are, we are doing the promotion at uh, our meetups at our conferences we have wiki live conference uh, where we talk about our grants not just micro grants but annual grants as well so if we remember talking with someone who had an idea we just send them uh, the, the call for a project proposal uh, submit, uh, submission sorry uh, so we use different ways of uh, communication with our target groups. Just one, one more little thing is we also used uh, fun stuff which is Wiki Corner. We uh, go to public events like concerts or uh, well, uh, festivals. We are there, we're present, we can just show to people what we can do and what they, can, uh, what they could do if they join us and then uh, they have enough time to decide whether they would like to get involved. Um, sorry, just one thing, I want to add this and that's it. Uh, it it's all also important to uh, um, you know, suggest your project leaders that they can also uh, spread the word, uh, they can also share our call. Uh, so they probably have some friends who are interested or some colleagues or uh, which is the budget you have uh, per year for these grants uh, and how many projects do you grant per year approximately? So basically, we uh, when we plan uh, plan an annual budget, we are uh, thinking about five or six projects, and uh, each project is budgeted by 500 euros. Uh, it's the maximum uh, amount. Uh, but uh, maybe even here, uh, I we have a lot of examples where uh, people don't need 500 euros. They they for example want five workshops, and they just need money for snacks and drinks and 
if I, 100 euros is yeah, it's enough for that. So sometimes we have seven or eight projects. For example, now we have nine projects in progress this year. And uh, it, it really depends on the project proposals. For example, if we see that somewhere we can you know, lower the budget and uh, have, give the chance to another volunteer, we do that. So it's just planning. Yeah, my question is that uh, how many are you? How many people are you? Okay. The team. How many? How many people are in the team? In your team? Yeah. Our team? Oh, you mean the team who are organizing my event? Yes. Uh, well, um, it depends. We have uh, like a committee for uh, decision making, like uh, for selection process, and it's three or four people. Uh, but for example, the process is like we have a poll and then we have submission, uh, some yeah submission period, and after that the committee is you know uh, have a meet up and talk about those proposals and after that we are doing the results of first round of selection. We propose that to a board members 